Hello, my name is Natasha Williams. I'm an attorney advisor at the El Paso Immigration Court, which is part of the Department of Justice's Executive Office for Immigration Review, also known as EOIR or EOR. EOIR created this video for you as part of our model hearing program, also known as MHP, a program designed to help you get a better idea of what to expect when representing a non-citizen in hearings before EOIR. In this video, EOIR employees will demonstrate what you can expect when representing a non-citizen in a master calendar hearing before EOIR. This video is the second part of a three-part series. If you have not already watched the introductory video to the MHP, I invite you to do so prior to viewing this video. I also encourage you to review the mock record of proceedings created for this case prior to watching the model hearing. The mock record of proceedings, commonly referred to as an ROP or ROPE, is available on i and contains a form I-862 known as a notice to appear which is a document that the Department of Homeland Security issues to individuals and files with the Immigration Court to start immigration proceedings. It also contains a Form I-213, titled Record of Deportable or Inadmissible Alien, which DHS uses to set out allegations about the individual's status as a non-citizen of the United States and the individual's removability. You will also find in the mock ROP the respondent's filing, which contains the respondent's form I-589, the application for asylum and withholding of removal, and some supporting documents. Please note while reviewing the ROP that there are not sample documents for all items of supporting evidence that would be included in the respondent's filing. Instead, there is an annotated table of contents, which identifies each document included in the filing and where needed explains the content you would expect to find in each document. Many respondents in immigration court identify a language other than English for proceedings. An EOIR will provide an interpreter so each respondent can participate in proceedings in the language that they best understand. In this video, there is no interpreter. You see the respondent wearing a headset, like those used for simultaneous interpretation, and you will hear the immigration judge introduce a court interpreter and speak to the respondent as though an interpreter were participating. But again, there is no interpreter present in the recording. We included this piece to provide you with a sense for how the immigration judge would interact with the respondent when using an interpreter. To best grasp the idea of how the interpreter would perform their role in these proceedings, try to visualize that the interpreter is simultaneously interpreting everything said during the proceedings through the respondent's headset. Also understand, that a respondent speaking through an interpreter would be answering in their native language to allow the interpreter to then interpret the respondent's words into English for the court record. Now, before we begin the hearing, a quick disclaimer. Information provided in this video is intended solely as an educational resource for legal advocates to improve the quality of advocacy before the immigration courts. Information presented does not replace case law or any EOIR policy or publication, and may not be construed to create or limit any rights enforceable by law. Information provided as part of the MHP, either in writing or spoken, is not legal advice, and does not constitute any legal opinion by the Department of Justice or the Department of Homeland Security. The case scenarios included in the MHP are fictional, any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual cases, is purely coincidental. Nothing in this video or its associated materials should be construed as mandating a particular outcome in any case. The master calendar hearing modeled in this video is for John Doe, the respondent, who is a native and citizen of Nicaragua. In April of 2018, when Mr. Doe was a university student, the Sandinista government announced social security reforms. In response to the announcement, Mr. Doe began participating in peaceful anti-government protests with friends and classmates. During the period between April 2018 
and June 2018, government supporters physically harmed Mr. Doe at a protest where police were present, and the respondent was twice detained and interrogated by Nicaraguan police. Mr. Doe eventually completely stopped participating in and providing aid to the protest, but Nicaraguan police did not stop looking for him, including going to his home. Fearing that he would no longer be safe at home, Mr. Doe fled to the United States and entered by crossing the Rio Grande near Laredo, Texas. Mr. Doe is seeking asylum in the United States based on the claim that he has been and will be persecuted in Nicaragua on account of his political opinion. Let's meet Mr. Doe and begin our model master calendar hearing. Transcriber, we are on the record. Today's date is September 21st, 2021. This is United States Immigration Judge Lauren Piero sitting in Newark, New Jersey. This is the initial master calendar hearing and removal proceedings in the matter of John Doe, case number 123-456-789. Respondent is present in court today with counsel. Counsel, please state your appearance for the record. Priya Mahmed for the respondent, Your Honor. Thank you. And for the government? Natasha Williams for the Department of Homeland Security. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. My understanding is that the respondent's best language is Spanish. We have the court's Spanish interpreter, Isabel Interpreter, here with us today. Ms. Interpreter is the official interpreter for the Immigration Court and need not be sworn in. To the respondent, good morning, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. Thank you. Is Spanish your best language? Yes, Spanish. Based upon the respondent's answer, today's hearing will be conducted in the Spanish language. To the respondent, do you understand the interpreter? Yes. If at any point in time you have any difficulty hearing or understanding the interpreter, please let me know immediately. Yes, thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask you to stand and raise your right hand in order to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will provide in these proceedings will be the truth? The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Thank you. You may be seated. I am now going to ask you some questions. What is your full name, please? John Doe. And is it proper to call you Mr. Doe? Yes. The government alleges that you do not have a legal right to stay in the United States. The purpose of these proceedings is to determine whether or not you should be allowed to stay in the United States. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. Very good. I see that there is an attorney, Ms. Priyam Ahmed, sitting next to you. Do you want Ms. Priyam Ahmed to be your attorney and represent you in these proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Counsel, have you filed a notice of appearance? No, Your Honor. I have the form EOIR 28 with me now. May I approach? You may. Thank you. To the respondent, are you still living at 1539 Landover Road in Newark, New Jersey, 07101? Yes. Thank you. And is your phone number still 987-654-3210? Yes, Your Honor. And counsel, you'll advise the respondent of the requirement to update any change of address or phone number with the court? Would you give the advisal this time, please? Certainly. To the respondent. I am going to be providing you with a change of address form. If you move or change your address at any time during these proceedings, you must tell your attorney right away, and your attorney must complete this form and file it with the court within five days of moving. This form is the only way to change your address with the court. If we make any changes to your hearings, we will be sending you information to your attorney, but it is still very important that we have your correct address on file in case we need to reach you. So please use the form if you move or change your address. You must also make sure that your attorney has your correct address and phone number at all times so that your attorney can reach you. If at any point in time your attorney is no longer assisting you with your case, you are still responsible for making sure that the court has your correct address on file. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. Very good. I'm now going to speak to your attorney. Okay. Counsel, does the respondent waive formal reading of the rights advisals? Yes, Your Honor. And does the respondent concede being the person named in the notice to appear and receiving proper service of that notice to appear on August 18th of 2018? Yes, Your Honor. Very good. We're going to mark that as Exhibit 1. 
Does the respondent also waive a formal reading of the charges? Yes, Your Honor. Is the respondent prepared to plead with respect to allegations one through four and concede or contest the sole charge under INA section 212A6, capital A, lowercase i? Yes, Your Honor. We admit all of the allegations and concede the charge of removability. Thank you. Based upon the admissions and concessions of the respondent and counsel, the court finds that the sole charge of removability contained in the notice to appear is sustained by clear and convincing evidence, and that the respondent is therefore subject to removal as charge. Does the respondent wish to designate a country for removal? Should that become necessary? We decline to designate, Your Honor. Thank you. DHS, do you wish to designate? Nicaragua, Your Honor. Nicaragua will be so designated. Counsel, what relief will the respondent be seeking? Asylum, withholding of removal under the INA, and protection under the Convention Against Torture. I see in the ROP a filing titled Application for Asylum, Withholding of Removal, and Protection under the UN Convention Against Torture and Supporting Documents. It contains tabs A through N. There is also a Form I-589 in that filing at tab A. Is that the application that the respondent will proceed with? Yes, Your Honor. To the respondent, the law requires that I advise you about the consequences of knowingly filing a frivolous application for asylum. If you knowingly file a frivolous application for asylum, you will be barred forever from receiving any benefit under the Immigration and Nationality Act. An application for asylum is frivolous if it contains statements or responses to questions that are deliberately fabricated, that is, made up. It is very serious. But know that there is a difference between an application being denied and an application being determined to be frivolous. In other words, an asylum application might not be granted, but that does not necessarily mean the application is frivolous. Do you understand what I've just told you? Yes. And knowing this, do you still wish to proceed and continue with your asylum application? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. To the department, have you received the I-589 filing? Yes, Your Honor, we have. Very good. Counsel, if you'd like to submit any additional supporting documents, you're welcome to do so. However, I'd ask that you submit them at least 30 days prior to the date of the hearing. Anything submitted after that call-up date will be deemed untimely. Counsel, I'm looking at tab C of your filing, and it looks like you've already submitted the application for biometrics. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor, we have. Very good. Let's go ahead and get you set up with a date for the next hearing. That will be an individual hearing on the merits. Are you available on October 28th, 2021 at 1 p.m.? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Very good. Counsel, will you advise the respondent of the consequences of his failure to appear? Would you mind providing the advisal now, please? Not a problem. To the respondent, your next hearing is currently scheduled for October 28th, 2021 at 1 p.m. It is very important that you be here for all of your hearings because if you fail to appear for the hearing, I may hold the hearing in your absence and enter an order of removal against you. The only reasons that would be good enough to not show up for your next hearing would be exceptional circumstances outside of your control. For example, serious illness for yourself or serious illness or death of an immediate family member. If you fail to appear for anything other than these exceptional circumstances and I ordered you removed, any applications you submitted requesting to stay in the United States that may be pending before this court would be deemed abandoned and would be denied. Additionally, you would become ineligible for a period of 10 years for certain other forms of relief, such as voluntary departure, cancellation of removal, adjustment of status, or change of status. Do you understand? Yes, I will be here. Very good. And make sure that you stay in touch with your attorney to prepare your case. I usually just issue a pre-hearing order to tell the attorneys this, but I'm going to explain it to you as well. Because you have submitted your ap asylum application after May 11, 2005, the corroboration standards established in the Real ID Act apply to your case. What that means is that even if you testify credibly, you're required by law to submit evidence or proof of the things that you have claimed, if proof is reasonably available. Your attorney will talk to you about what documents will be helpful to you in your specific case, but generally you will want to start thinking about what documents are out there that would help me understand what happened to you. Like for example, medical, police, court or school records, identification or membership cards, 
any notes that may have been left at your residence by people who harmed or threatened you, and any other evidence or documentation relating to your claim or events listed in your asylum application. If available, you should also submit signed declarations from family members, friends, and acquaintances who witnessed any harm, threats, or mistreatment you experienced, or who can provide any support for your application. I cannot accept anything that does not have a certified English translation. So you will need to work with your attorney to get those documents and to get certified translations for anything that is not in the English language in time for your next hearing. Do you understand all of that? Yes. Make sure you cooperate with your attorney to try to get those documents because if you do not have something that I think you should have, you will need to explain why you did not have it and what you did to try to get it. And if your explanation for why you don't have it is insufficient or implausible, I may deny your application for failure to meet your burden of proof, even if you testify credibly. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. I will try. Very good. Is there anything further then from either party? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. There being nothing further, this matter is now concluded. A new notice of hearing will be issued to the parties at the conclusion of these proceedings. Thank you. We're off the record. The model hearing has ended and the court has adjourned. I hope you learned something from watching the interactions among all of the individuals essential to an immigration court hearing. Of course, every case is unique and each case's factors can impact the flow of the hearing. But this video presents a good view of what you can expect when you represent someone before an immigration judge. Again, if you have not already done so, I do encourage you to watch our related introductory video and model individual hearing, which are available on i -Corps. EOIR strongly encourages those of you who work in the private sector or for a non-governmental agency to consider representing a respondent pro bono at your local immigration court in the coming weeks and months. Organizations in your area can connect you with opportunities to serve the public in that important way and can provide additional support and guidance. We also encourage you to take a look at the other pro bono resources we have available on the EOIR website. Just visit www.justice.gov forward slash EOIR. There are additional resources also available on i -Corps. If you have any questions after watching this video, or after reviewing our other model hearing program resources, please reach out to us at pao.eoir at usdoj.gov. We also welcome your feedback. Thanks again for your interest and attention.